Welcome to the next part in my series of painting each of the orc clans. This one is how to paint a death skull boy. Okay, so here are the colors used. This was a fun little project. I hadn't painted a death skull boy before. So I'm starting with the base colors here. Started with the pants, a Xandri dust, and actually going to use the airbrush to pop in a little quick and easy highlight before I move forward with the rest of the base colors. I'm going to move pretty quickly through the basing stage of this model as I feel like it gets a little bit boring watching someone just kind of paint by number. But I'll spend a little more time and have a little more footage in the stages when I'm doing some of the detail work. Okay, just popping in some black on the shirt of the orc boy. Again, you can see I'm actually just using a black ink. Just something that I prefer to use recently. It's just uh, highly pigmented, flows well. It's easy to block in color. Unfortunately, it has a little bit of a satin finish, but I can knock that back when I apply a matte varnish at the end. All right, coming in with the Steel Legion Drab and the Rhinox Hide. The Rhinox Hide is going on the boots and the Steel Legion Drab is gonna be the starter color for all the strapping. Again, I'm following much of the similar stages I have in other videos. You can get a little redundant. Uh, I'm gonna lay in all the base colors. Here you can see laying in the, the blues finally, starting with that McCrag blue. But I lay in all the base colors, come back with a wash, and then spend a lot of time working up the details, highlighting, doing some weathering. It's just the stages I like to work in, especially with orcs. You don't have to work that way, but I find that having a system kind of helps me move quickly through models. All right, just coming in with the lead belcher, going to flesh in the metal bits here. All right, so this is where we were at so far. All right, next up, I'm gonna do a little freehanding. I wanted some zigzags and a couple other patterns on this guy, and I always like to do the freehanding prior to doing the weathering, so it really looks like that, that paint shop has kind of weathered with the rest of the armor. It's also nice to do the freehanding at this stage where your base color is pretty basic and simple. So if you, you know, if you mess up any of your lines, you can come back with that McCrag blue and, and clean everything up if you wanted to. You gotta keep your paints thin to do this kind of work. So sometimes it may take a couple of thin coats to get that white nice. You can see I did a couple of checks on the, the blade and the gun. I had one on the uh, ammo case, but uh, that's it is actually going to end up going away. Here I come in with the lead belcher and do a quick little dry brush on it. Kind of gives that worn away effect. It's not something that kind of sticks around that long, but I, uh, I think it gives a textural element. All right, so we're working washes. I'm starting with the, the blue wash here, the Drakenhof nightshade. I'm just adding that to the, the blue specific elements. I'm even working over uh, some of the freehand, which is okay. Uh, I think I, I, I come back with some white later on to kind of clean it up. Next, I just use the Agrax Earth Shade on the rest of the, the miniature. All right, so this is, this is a shot of the miniature after the washes were dried. And you can see I kind of took the time to work in the details on the skin and the face. If you're interested on all those steps, I have videos on how I approach all of those. All right, so we're gonna start with the shirt. I like to start with the hard to reach 
parts first. So I usually start towards like the center of a miniature. So that means the shirt, the uh, strapping, you know, and then working outward, uh, especially with this stage. I just got myself this Dark Reaper color. It's a nice color. You can see I used it on the edging and then I, I lightened it a little bit with some Pallid Witch Flesh to kind of do the second stage of highlighting. All right, so we're gonna come in with the Xandri Dust to do the strapping. This is very similar to one of my other videos on how to paint an orc boy. Uh, same exact steps. I add in those edging, add in the textural hatching, lighten it, add in a little more hatching, and then I come back with a, a wash. So you can see I just did it on one strap there, and I'm gonna end up going back and, and taking this step with all the rest of the strapping. All right, so that's where we were. You can see I, I finished off all the rest of the straps. I like to come in with the Seraphim Sepia here. It almost has that yellowy orange quality, which contrasts real nicely against the blue. I just kind of work it into some of the, the, the recessed areas. I'm not covering the whole strap. It just creates a little saturation and color transition. Okay, so I'm, I'm working with the Shanti Bone and, and Screaming Skull. The uh, Upshati bone, I'm just doing a quick little dry brush on that fur of the boots. You know, you could paint it by hand, but it's far easier to do a dry brush and, you know, you get a nice little effect. All right, I just wanted to show you the consistency of the Screaming Skull. At first, I really didn't like the pants that much, so I wanted to lighten it up. You can see that I'm using like a glaze consistency. So that means something that's really translucent, really thin, Apply that in thin layers, you let it dry, apply a little bit more, and that kind of builds up the color. I wanted to lighten it uh, just to, to kind of bring back that original color that we had. Okay, so now we're getting really crazy because I decided I also wanted to do something kind of risky. So I was going to try a splatter effect. So. Here, you can see I took a brush, loaded it up with a wash, and using my airbrush, you, at a relatively high PSI, I think it was about 20 PSI, sprayed the air through the brush, which created a splatter effect. I didn't want this all over my nicely painted orc, so one of my favorite masking tools is actually Silly Putty. This stuff's great. I've never had it leave any sort of residue or pull any paint off, so, this little lump is actually my orc, all masked up, and I'm gonna just try to get that splatter effect on the pants. This is obviously not a perfectly controlled technique, and it actually took a little bit of practice uh, to get it, and I, I still don't think I did it as well as I probably could. Next up, I come in with some Nuln oil here, and I think I'm a little more controlled with it. I don't have as much, quite as much on the brush and it works out a little bit better. You get a little bit finer spray. I was really going for something that was like textural and added some, some visual interest. It was something I hadn't tried before with orcs. All right, so peeling off the uh, mask, you can see it comes off no issues at all. Highly recommend these. All right, and there you go. You see, it, people have told me it kind of looks like a, a camouflage pattern, which I agree with. Actually, I think it would be a, a nice feature to add over a camo pattern. Okay, so we're finally gonna do the, the blues. Coming back first with the McCrag blue. That's gonna be like that first color that I'm gonna step up to a mixture of Teclas blue and the McCrag blue, and then finally uh, a full full blown Teclas on the on the edges. May even lighten that a little bit more. I'm leaving in a little bit more footage of working with the blues, especially that's so important to the Death Skulls. You can see I'm not covering my work entirely. 
I keep the paint thin. I work up towards the edges, kind of pulling the paint towards the edges. That helps kind of create that transition and that layer, layering effect. You know, it, it gives that, that nice satisfying transition when you step up the highlights. Okay, so like I said, here's a mixture of the McCrag Blue and the Teclis Blue. Kind of leaving a little bit of my work previously, I, I come back in in kind of a smaller space, working closer to the edge. Work that in, again, the, the paint is thin. Kind of keeping it in controlled areas, and as, if you step up like this, I think you get some nice transitions without working too, too hard to kind of, kind of create them on the armor. I take this exact same process with the reds that I do with the Evil Sun Boys, and the blue worked wonderfully in this process. It was the Bad Moon orc that I had painted in the previous video that the yellows were, were fighting me in this process. All right, so here you can see I'm just starting to edge with the Teclas Blue, and you kind of get that, that vibrant pop of the blue. Really enhances the, the McCrag and the, the darker blue that was had the wash there, when you really kind of bring out that, that more saturated color on the edge. Now I'm gonna come back and weather this blue, you know, with some, some chipping and some scratches, but I'll work up the color. And you, you see I'm working over that, that dry brush color, but there is some of that still there. There's still some of that texture. All right, so I just did some black lining work. It's sometimes good to kind of block out some black on some of the elements before you go back and actually paint them with a metallic. Sometimes just running a black line into some of the more recessed areas to kind of distinguish the details is really helpful. This is an important stage sometimes periodically to kind of make distinctions between the, the parts of a miniature. Black lining does give a, a kind of more graphic look, but it also can be done not necessarily with black. You can use other colors to, to in this process, but it's important to create that distinction between the, the details. All right, so I just lightened up the Teclas Blue with a little palette witch flesh again and just you can see I'm just highlighting some of the scratching that I had had pulled in with the black tiny little details just little vibrant pops I'll touch some of the edges too with this this color all right so like I said I'm, I came back in with the whites to just clean up those free-handed details I wanted to bring the color back a little bit before starting to, to weather him this is also a good opportunity again to just kind of clean up your work a little bit, make sure everything looks the way you want it to. And if something doesn't look the way you want it, don't be afraid to, to paint over it or to rework it. You saw that I got rid of the freehanding piece on the, the barrel of the gun, the, the ammo case of the gun. It just didn't look right, so I just decided to make it blue. All right, so I wanted to create like a little bit of a chipped effect to the freehand, so I came back with the McCrag Blue first to just sponge it on. This looks like the paint layer kind of flaked off. And then starting my work with some of the metallics, I, I came in first with a very faint sponge of the Iron Breaker, and then I'll come in with a brush and really kind of do all the, the detail work. You can see I'm just uh, hatching in some of like the chipping and scratches with, with the, the silver, but also doing some of the, the bolts and rivets, just 
kind of punching up some of the details. Coming with that lighter silver helps helps draw the eye to those items and, and kind of punch them out a little bit. Again, you know, creating that distinction between the details. There's certain themes you'll find when, when you're painting and it starts to look good. It's, it's, it's when you're really defining the, the pieces of the miniature. You're creating contrast. Okay, you've seen this before too, but I, I wanted to just do the heat stand effect on the gun, on the shooter. Starting with the Drakenhof, and then coming in with the Karienberg Crimson, and the Sepia. You can work them while they're still wet. What happened is I actually applied a layer, let it dry, and then came back and did another to make it a little more vibrant. All right, so this is where we were. We're getting pretty close to the end here. Uh, there's some, some weathering I wanted to do. I was on the fence if I wanted to do some rusting, but I really thought that uh, the Death Skulls, you know, a little bit of an orangey rust would contrast with the blue really nicely because of them being those complementary colors. I took some of the, that Vallejo rust effect and, and just applied it in, in some small patches. I don't have it recorded, but I actually use a little bit of typhus corrosion too. I've been using these two in conjunction. Uh, the typhus has a, a, a little stronger grain and textural element. All right, so this is, I laid in the colors there and you can see the last little step for the weathering was just a, a very, very faint dry brush on those items just to kind of pull out the, the rust. All right, and I, I called this miniature done there. I put together a little junkyard base for him. Something appropriate for a, a death skull, I think. I was pretty happy with how he came out. He didn't fight me like the, the Bad Moon Boy did. And I got to try some new things, especially with the pants. The blue really came out the way I wanted to, which is a nice thing too. There's a shot you get a little detail of the, uh, the free handing. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the support. Remember, you can follow me over at Quarter Paint on Instagram. And like I said, one of these days, I, I might have a, a Patreon. Thanks.